Okay, welcome everyone. It's 2 p.m. Eastern time, so we're gonna get started. Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Sean Penny from the product marketing team at Ops GD, and I'm happy to be joined by John Meyer, the solutions engineer here on the team. John, how are you? Doing good, happy to be here. Great, great. So we will jump right into it. Uh, so we've got a very uh, full, uh, full uh, short agenda, but it's full of good information. And if uh, just some housekeeping items, we will be recording this, so you don't have to take notes per se and we'll send out an email recording within probably 24 hours tomorrow sometime. And if you have any questions, you can use the little go to webinar chat box on the side of the screen, ask any questions that you have specific to your own use case for actions. And we can definitely dive into some of those near the end of the webinar. And if we, if a question is a little too, too in depth or we don't have time to get to it live on the air, we'll take it offline and make sure that we get someone on the team to get back to you and get an answer. So with that said, we're gonna, we're gonna dive right in and we're going to spend 99% of the time in a demo led by John, but before we do that, we just want to give a quick overview. If you're new to Opportunity Actions, and this might be your first time looking at it, or you're kind of just been playing around with it, or you're wondering how it works. Basically, Opportunity Actions is a new way that you can take and execute actions directly from Opportunity and run automated scripts and playbooks via different third-party platforms that we've integrated with. So, uh, teams, individuals, you can inter, uh, integrate with those automation platforms and trigger tasks right from Opportunity Console or even from the mobile app, which is pretty cool. So you can set it up so things automatically run automatic, automatically without a human interaction. If you have like a remedial task that your team is constantly just manually having to do, you can just set it and forget it depending on what it is. Or you can put in a step as John will show us where you can manually click a button and have that little la layer of control. In terms of what supported channels we have today at, at uh, you know, a couple months into this feature being available, Systems Manager. So any of the documentation that resides in Systems Manager, if you're a customer of, of that and use that platform, uh, we're going to show you an example of EC2. You can set up any of those playbooks to run automated uh, scripts and things. We also have an open uh, API REST endpoint. So there's a bunch of stuff you can do there. And uh, the newest one is with SNS. So on the REST endpoint, you know, that's a flexible way. So if you're using anything like Ansible, Salt, Lambda, many more, you can kind of bake in and create uh, the different automation playbooks and things that you need to do, you know, that are a little bit more custom. And we'll, we're gonna show some examples of that in the demo today. And also the body of the, the request can be customized using the alert values. So we'll show you that as well. So really giving you, not only do you get to automate things, but you get to really control the message, what shows up in the description field, et cetera. So you really have control over it. On the systems manager side, so that's a direct API integration for running those document documents that are in systems manager. And as you, if you're a systems manager customer, you know there's a long list of things that, of playbooks that already exist or documents. And, you know, things like, like I mentioned, restarting an EC2 server, you know, uh, increasing cloud resources, you know, gathering information on a system, all of those things and more can be done. And then the SNS side, this is the newest one. This just launched in the last week. So if you're an SNS customer out there, we're touching upon this today. We're going to spend most of our time in Systems Manager and with the, the REST endpoint. But if there's a specific case that you have, we can always talk more about it. But basically, another way to integrate with Lambda and deliver different messages and, and custom parameters uh, to an SNS topic. So those are the three different ways you can kind of interact and connect different tools and set up automation playbooks uh at a high level and now we're going to go in i'm going to switch control over to john here and we are going to do a live demo of some of this this cool stuff you can do john let me just switch control over to you all right so let me go ahead and share my screen here yep you can see that all right so today i will be walking you through how to set up um, a few different types of automated actions, and then I will actually demonstrate how those actions are run. So if we go to the Teams dashboard um, and we select one of, the, one of our teams, uh, you will now see an actions uh, option added to your team. So to configure your actions, you want to click on this actions option here. And then now um, this is essentially your, your uh, main page to set up these different actions. So if we go to add action channel here, this is the first step 
um, in, in setting up the action. So you're going to want to give it a, give it a name depending on what type of action you're setting up. Um, so for the types, you can select AWS Systems Manager, REST Endpoint, or uh, AWS SNS. When you select that option, you will be given um, additional information based on the type of channel. So if you're setting up Systems Manager, um, it will ask for your AWS account ID, uh, the specific AWS region, and then you will also be, uh, you can also put in an AWS role for this uh, and then create that role using a CloudFormation template. So if we, if we put in um, a role here, we can actually click this button here to actually create um, create this, you know, using a CloudFormation template. Um, if we do the same thing, we can also do the same thing for uh, a REST endpoint. So when we're configuring the REST endpoint, uh, you will be asked to give the type. You will asked, be asked to uh, put in the URL, and you can also pass in additional headers. So if you want to uh, pass in authorization, uh, content type, uh, et cetera, you can also pass in those values uh, through the headers um, for uh, the REST endpoint. So let's first take a look at um, hey, this. John? Yes. Now I'm getting a question here that from a couple people that the audio might not be working. Can can you guys type in the chat box? Can you hear us? Is the audio working? I'm gonna make sure a couple of people had said they couldn't hear. Yeah, I, I, I will. I will try to speak a bit louder. Um, okay, it's working. Yeah, I think we had, uh, Nick says it's working. So, <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, like I will was, make sure to speak loud yeah. and clear. All right, cool. All right, carry on. Okay, so let me pull up this action channel that we have set up here for Systems Manager. You can see we put in our account ID, we selected the region, and then we have this AWS role set up. So once the channel is established, you're then going to want to add the actual action uh, that you want to execute. So for this example, we're going to be restarting an EC2 instance. So for the name, I'm just going to type in restart EC2. I'm going to select the systems manager channel, and then I'm going to select that channel that we already have predefined. Then from there, once you select the channel, it actually pulls all of the available systems manager documents from your AWS account. Um, so you can, you know, you can select the document from here um, that you want to automate. So here I'm just going to search for restart EC2 instance. I'm going to select next. And in here, uh, this is where you actually put in the parameters for this request. So I'm just going to quickly go over to my AWS instance. I'm going to grab one of these instance IDs and I'm going to paste this. Oh, that's the wrong. Make sure that, yep. All right, I'm going to go ahead and then create uh, the action using that instance ID. So now that we have an action configured, we need to determine when this action should be executed. So you can do this both manually as well as um, automatically. So if you want to automate this action whenever a certain type of alert occurs, you would set up an action policy. So if we, so if we go to our policies page here, for this particular team, down towards the very bottom, you'll, you'll now see a new option for action policies. I'm going to click action policy, and I will just call this restart EC2 instance policy. I'm going to enable this, and we're just going to create a rule here that says whenever an alert contains the word EC2 down and the message, then uh, trigger this policy. Uh, this is pretty generic, but this is just you know a, a test use case. So if it matches on this rule, message contains EC2 down, then you select the action that you want to be executed. Um, you can have it executed automatically or as soon as the alert's created. You can have it executed one minute after, et cetera. So for this instance, for this test, we'll just say to execute this one minute after the, the alert's created then we will go ahead and enable this policy. Now, if you, want the, um, if you want this action to be executed manually using a button, you can tie that into your integrations. So let me go to our integrations here. 
And let's just take a look at CloudWatch, for example. So within your AWS CloudWatch integration, you can actually add the actions from here. So here, uh, this is the advanced section of the CloudWatch integration. In this action section here, you can essentially tell the integration to make these buttons and actions available on the alert as they're created. So here, we're just going to add the action. Sorry, make that uppercase. Restart EC2. And then once we go ahead and save that, then that button will be available on our um, CloudWatch alerts coming in um, from AWS. You can also have different rules for different types of alerts. So maybe we want this as our catch-all, but we, we want to rule up here for EC2 down. We can say if the alarm description contains EC2 down, then make that action available. Else, if it's any other type of alert, it may not be related to our EC2 instances, then don't make that action available. Only make that action available when this type of alert occurs. So this is how you would essentially make that action available when um, that type of alert occurs. So now I'm going to go ahead and in here and create a test alert. I will say EC2 down, US West. I will assign this to our ops team since that's where we have those actions set up. I'll give it P1. I'll add the same thing in the description. And then just for our test, I'm going to add in our action restart EC2. So we, we will have the ability to manually uh, trigger this. So as I create this alert, we can take a look in the details here. And down here towards the bottom, you will see that we are um, going to run the automated action restart EC2 instance policy in one minute. Um, if we didn't want that automated action, if we don't want to wait a minute, we also added it as a manual action here. So now if we hover over this restart EC2 button, we can click on this and we'll ask, it will ask us for confirmation um, that we want to restart the following instance. And then you can also uh, assume an automation role uh, that's not required. So we, we haven't specified that. So here we're pointing to this instance and we're going to click execute. All right, so now in the logs, we will also see um, that the action has been successfully uh, submitted and executed on AWS Systems Manager. We're also given the execution ID. Then now if we go back to our instance here, we can see that the instance is currently being restarted. So that, that's just one example um, of how you can use Systems Manager to, um, to automate some of these actions that you want to take. Um, not only can you restart an instance, you can resize an instance. Um, you can, again, create JIRA issues from Systems Manager. Um, you can do tons of different things um, depending on what documents are available to you um, within Systems Manager. Um, and one, one other thing to point out is you can also uh, limit this action to certain users. So here uh, we have this option here to allow all users on this team to run this action or you can also specify certain users. So only maybe you only want certain individuals um, to execute this. Let's do, so maybe we only want Clark Kent to have the ability to run this action. You can um, specify which users can and cannot run this action. And if an authorized user attempts to run the action, they'll be notified that they are not authorized. So that we do have some permissions around who can run actions and who cannot. All right, so that is the uh, systems manager integration. The REST endpoint integration is very similar. Um, you will, again, configure the action channel uh, with the URL and header that you want to point to. In this case, this is actually the endpoint for a uh, AWS Lambda function. So whenever uh, something hits this, it will execute a Lambda function and perform some functionality. Here, we're going to go, to go ahead and add the, the specific action. So we will call this um, execute lambda. We're going to specify the REST endpoint. And then we're going to choose the channel that we already have set up. Once we hit next, we can actually add in additional parameters 
um, to pass in through, for the body of this request. So maybe we want to pass in the option alert description. We can do something like this, curly brace description to pull that in from the alert. And we, you can also specify if it's a string, Boolean number, list, etc. So we'll just say this is a string. And we will say, we will also pass in the priority, priority. And let's also pass in the option alert message. All right, so now that those parameters are defined, we can go ahead and create this action. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to create, um, we're going to use the same policy essentially to, um, to execute this Lambda function when an EC2 instance goes down. So instead of go ahead, going ahead and um, running the systems manager integration, we can go ahead and execute a Lambda function uh, when, th when this occurs. All right. Now I'm going ahead and create, I'm going to create a new alert. We'll do the same thing, EC2 down. US West, I'm going to assign it to the ops team. We're going to give it priority one. And then for the actions, we're going to put an execute Lambda. We're going to create the alert. All right, and now once this is created, again, we can see that um, it is delaying the automation of the uh, execution for one minute. Uh, and if we didn't want to wait, again, we could also execute from here. So if we click Execute Lambda, it will show um, the information that's being passed in. So we didn't specify a description. Um, we are passing in the priority as P1, and we're passing in the option alert message. So we can go ahead and click Execute, and that is executed and runs that Lambda function. So the REST endpoint, again, is very flexible. Um, you can not only use it to um, automate Lambda functions, but you can also you, uh, automate other things. So if you want to integrate tools like Salt, Ansible, um, Chef, tools like those for additional automation, you can point to REST endpoints and automate those actions. Um, you can, again, create JIRA issues, post to JIRA, update, update JIRA. Uh, if you want to do some transitions within JIRA, you can also do that using our REST endpoint. So the REST endpoint is very flexible, um, more so than your standard webhook integration, because you can actually customize the parameters that you're passing in. Uh, you're not confined to a, a default uh, webhook payload. And option, we also do have outgoing webhook um, integrations, but there's no way to customize that outgoing payload. So, for example, also if you if you're using you know a, another ticketing tool or ITSM tool, and they have specific parameters that they're expecting, you can go ahead and specify those parameters here um, pretty easily, and it is a, a very flexible integration. Yeah. Hey, John. Speaking of the flexibility of it, there's a few questions popping up about different tools, and obviously, many different things can be done. Some things have to take, be taken offline in terms of the complexity, but Puppet was one. I don't recall if Puppet is supported with uh, the REST endpoint or not, if you've heard of that. Um, I, believe a, I believe a Puppet integration is coming as well. Um, okay. our, our goal is to integrate with all the major um, config management and automation tools um, out there. So I, I know that we're closely working with, um, I think Ansible is going to be the first one that will be supported, but we are working uh, again with other automation tools like Puppet and Chef. But at, right, now, right now, at, at this moment, um, if there's a REST endpoint that we can hit that can do some of the automation, then you can certainly used, use our, our REST endpoint in, uh, integration for that. Right, and that's a good point for people to think about. If, if that tool has that endpoint open, open availability, there, more than likely there is a, probably a way you could do it depending on how technical you want to get. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I would like to you know, stop here uh, and, and break for some additional questions. Great. Yeah, we had a couple come in. Uh, let's see here. 
uh, when will actual action, this is an easy one, when will actions be available? Actions are available now. Uh, I believe standard under enterprise, correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I believe those are the plans. If you're on one of those plans, you can, and if you're not, you can talk to your, your, your rep about getting, uh, getting access to the, the feature. Yes, they are available on the standard and enterprise plans. Um, if for some reason you don't see them in your account, again, you can reach out to um, your assigned account manager or you can pop into the support chat here and someone will help you out. Great. And this is a bit more of a specific technical question, so I don't know we can try to talk about it now or take it offline, but Alan's asking, can we specify to run the the... the the SSM document on all instances or the, the systems manager document on all instances that have a tag that matches a key value pair. For example, if I wanted to target all members of an auto scale group. Um, we'll have to take that off offline. Um, we can follow up via email and, and yep. see that, see how that would be done. Great. Okay, and let's see what else. Uh, someone's asking about Azure, which I assume would be kind of under the same guise of when you're talking about the endpoint about what's available and what you can integrate and what you can't integrate. Yeah, I, I know um, at this time we, we don't natively integrate with Azure. Um, that's something that, again, we're definitely looking at uh, on the future roadmap. Um, but right now the, the best way would be to use, um, you know, the REST endpoint integration. Great. Okay, good. Um, so now's a good time. If anyone else has any questions, I think we've answered. Oh, maybe there's one more here. Yes. Uh, yeah, we'll share all the all the details. Someone was asking about the the recording. Yeah, we'll be sharing all the details of the webinar after the fact as well. Um, so that's good. So going uh, one last time, I'm going to take control back here. If anyone else has any final questions, sure. now's a great time to ask them. While we have John here on the line. And let me pull up the. Um, this, yeah, so let's see. I don't think we have any more questions at the moment, but. Um, oh, here's one actually. Yes, this is actually a good point. When you added the action to the alert, do you need to have the name exactly as what is listed in the actions that were created under the team in order to have it work? I believe that's the case. You need to n name it. Exactly, as you named it when you set up the the action. Correct. Yes, it, it does need to to match exactly what is set up um, in the action screen. Yeah. Good question. Cool. You can. Uh, okay. uh, a lot. A lot of times we see customers just making it, um, you know, one word, um, and using some sort of camel case instead of using spaces in, in case someone forgets to add the spaces, etc. Um, so your organization can come up with their own naming standard to make it easier um, for them to remember. And then also, can you have the action available to multiple teams? So right now, actions themselves are team-based, just since they leverage our team-based policies. Um, so right now, they, they would need to be added uh, for each individual team. They're not, they're not a global setting. Right, you'd have to go in and, and do it for each team, right? Correct. Yeah, and that may change in the future as this is obviously an early, you know, the first version of uh, actions and they're adding, the team's adding a lot to it, like John mentioned up front. Uh, and then just a couple of good resources above and beyond. So like I said, we're gonna send the webinar recording so you'll have John's full demo. We also have like a nice three and a half minute video kind of walking through the high level use case of setting up a, a systems manager integration. The product documentation is here, and there's also a, a good use case in this blog post as well that you guys can can reference anytime questions come up. Um, and one more question popped up about actions being available on incidents, and I know that is currently not available. Correct me if I'm wrong, John, but I know that is something that the, on the product roadmap and they're working on. I believe I, I believe I heard an update today that that's being worked on. Correct. Yes, that is something that is coming right now. They're available on the responder alerts of an incident. So when you do get that notification for an incident, you're actually getting the notification from the responder alert. So the actions will be available on those responder alerts. Um, and that's all, this also ties into um, one more thing is you can also execute these actions from the mobile app as well as Slack. Um, so you're not confined to just running these actions 
automatically or via the web browser. You can run them on the go via you know, Slack, Microsoft Teams, the iOS or Android app, et cetera. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And when, and when I was setting that up, I think the one thing to keep in mind is you just have to do, all, I, think, I believe you have to do all your setup on the desktop and then you can use your mobile app to go and run, you know, kick off an EC2 restart or whatever it is that you're setting up right from the mobile app, which is nice. Yep. Cool. All right, great. Um, so we'll wrap up for today. If there's any questions that we didn't get to on the call, we'll definitely be sure to, to follow up with you offline. And like I said, we're going to send out the recording in the next 24 hours or so, so everyone have it. And if you have any further questions, like John mentioned, you can use the chat bubble in the app or on opportunity.com and reach out to the team at any time. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thanks. All right, thank you all.